Uh, how's everybody doing? Good? Good. Um, excited to be back, back at home. Um, I think before I get into last week, I think this week is probably the most, uh, in, some of the most important things that we mentioned early on is the fact that, that we're in a place right now as a program, um, that getting everybody out to this game this weekend is a huge deal. Um, our guys are feeding off our, 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 this energy right now, home and away. Our guys fed off last week's energy at their place. And I think getting our, getting our fans and our students and our community and everybody involved at Allegiant Friday night would be such an awesome thing. Um, it, it just would show uh, such growth in, in, in everything we're doing. Um, we'd be humbled and, and excited to have everybody out there on a Friday night uh, to come support our guys. I think the second thing to mention this weekend is, is also near and dear to this city. Obviously, it's a, it's a fifth year anniversary of, of one October, and it's something that obviously was felt here, but across the country. Um, a lot of us remember exactly where we were on that date, um, and that's this weekend, and, and a huge thanks and, and appreciation and, and uh, um, knowledge of the service that our first responders give to us on a daily basis that sometimes goes, goes unseen or untold is, uh, is a huge piece this weekend. So um, I'd be remiss not to start by mentioning that because that's, uh, that's bigger than football. And uh, we're a big piece of that. We're part of this community. And uh, I want to make sure that that's, that's understood, that, that our program and, and our, our football family here has is, is got our mind uh, on, on our job, but also on a bigger picture. So um, that last Saturday was, was, was awesome. It's a huge win for our program, a, a huge win for us in a lot of ways. I think uh, to go on the road against the defendant champs, um, when they've had a buy in the first week of conference and to really put our put our put ourselves up against um, coming off a big win before and a lot of high and, and a lot of uh, um, feeling good about ourselves to go up there and handle that business the way it gets done the way it got done was was awesome it wasn't it wasn't perfect there's some things we definitely need to clean up and get better at um, and, and fix and work we've been excited about that since being home um, on a short week even those things that we get to, we get to clean up are, are for us a, a, an awesome opportunity. But to go up there and win that way for, for what, we've, what we've done and in the places we've been so far uh, in this program meant a lot. I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of times um, that I felt like that game we would have lost in the past for a lot of different reasons. Um, it got tight. It got, it, it got tight. It got, you're on the road. You're, you're against a team you haven't won. You haven't beat very often in a long time. You haven't won up there in a long time. There's a lot of things against you. And uh, for our guys to fight through that the way they did, to stay disciplined amidst a lot of stuff that was going on after the whistle and things like that, to stay composed, um, man, I, it just says a lot about where, how far our locker rooms come, how far our coaches and, and our support staff and everybody in this building has, has, has gone in regards to building this thing the right way. And, and I'm, I'm just super excited to see those, those small things that lead up to big things. Those are all the predicates to winning we talk about. Offensively, we did a really nice job taking care of the football, um, zero turnovers. You won the first half. I thought we played catch. There was a couple drops out there. There's a lot left out there. We got to finish some. We've, we've been finishing a lot of those red zone drives with touchdowns. We left up, left up the automatic goot uh, to finish us off on a couple of those. But uh, we got to finish that in the fourth quarter and put that thing away in, in a better way. And that was an awesome, awesome uh, stepping stone for us to see that as well. Defensively, I mean, our hats off to the, the way they're taking the ball away, number one. Um, that is a huge key to victory to get six turnovers and two fourth down stops. I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing more fire, nothing more fired up in that locker room about getting that ball out. Um, and you guys could hear it in the game, hear it in that locker room after that game. Um, they did a nice job stopping the run again, three yards of rush and 96 yards on the ground. Um, and then they're, they're holding guys to the percentage of explosive plays is down. Big plays are down percentage wise, and I think there's some things we're definitely going to clean up, and we got to get, we got to get better at. That's part of the, that's part of the growth process of any team. Um, and then special teams doing a good job of good kicking. I think I think uh, we're doing a good job punting the wall as well. But we got to we got to fix those those critical errors in a, in a block punt. We almost gave up a, a you know we had a fake there, and we got to just make sure we understand we got to be able to have a knockout blow in any phase, offense, defense, and special teams to be able to put a team away. So um, obviously we're building off prior lessons, but I think that uh, we've got to accept now how to come home, learn, and uh, and handle, accept, and expect um, the expectations of, of of winning football, and uh, and that's a new mindset. And that is a real new mindset for everybody who's involved in the locker room that, that, gets, that stacks wins and gets used to winning. That is a change. You have to understand how that target changes and, and what the expectations are, how to reset your mind and understand that now every week you're the guy that everybody's looking at. And uh, that's a fun place to be. That's exactly where we wanted to be. That's an awesome change in our, in our dynamic. And uh, nothing fires me up more than, than having those guys and that opportunity and have this week coming uh, with the Lobos coming to us on Friday night. Coach, you mentioned that this could have been a game that in past seasons that you guys would have lost. You know, a lot of the media is saying, wow, we're so surprised by what UNLV is doing. Now you guys are 3-1. and one. You beat the defending champs. What do you have to say to the media out there that is saying, we're still surprised with this team? I mean, I, you get, I'm not going to I'm not gonna go there with that. I mean, I, we got to do our job. Uh, you guys got a job to do. Everyone's, everyone who's got, a, who's everyone who's got a, a keyboard or a mic or 
Whatever they've got, it's got, got an opinion, and that's okay. Uh, we got to go out and do our job. We know what we've been building in our program. We know the culture we've been building. We see a lot of the, the, a lot of the, the, the predicates, the winning that we've seen. I think the thing that stood out, and, and what I mentioned, is the fact that last year we lost six games in one, in one possession games. In a lot of similar fashion, that was right there. And I'm not, before I got here, I'm not, I'm not concerned about that, but the reality of it is, that game right there, and, and where we were at last year in the first regular season, we lost, we found, out, we found a way to lose that game. And, and we didn't, you didn't. There wasn't, any, there wasn't any doubt in our sideline that we were gonna, I shouldn't say lean out. There was, there was a little bit of a, a bow up. Um, that's human nature. I think when that momentum builds on the road versus the champs, you know, I think that's gonna happen. But to put them away, that's, that says a lot. To put them away and to do it the right way and to do it with confidence um, and to do it with a couple guys down, uh, man. That's going to go a long ways. A win like that is going to go a long ways, not just ne this week and next, moving forward, because it's fuel just like any other fire. Coach, uh, you talked about stopping the run again. Three out of the first four games, you stopped the run under 100 yards, right? We saw what Jay Knott did on Saturday, like 274 on the ground. Um, I know that you focus, right, on the number one focus is stopping the run. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you attribute the success to? Is it personnel? Is it scheme now? But what do you attribute the success to in stopping the run as much as you are now under 100 yards this season? I, I think there's a lot of things. There's, there's never one. Th Unfortunately, it's not like, you know, um, you know, an individual sport, I guess. It's probably I don't, I'm not, not saying anything about that. I just there's, there's, there's a lot of things that build up to that. I mean, I think it's personnel driven. We've recruited really well. Um, I don't think that, that anyone in our building would, be, would, be, would look at it now, look at, our, look at the way we're playing and say that the guys we've recruited haven't impacted what we're doing. Um, number two, I think we've also recruited coaches. <laughs> you know, we've had to, we put some new staff together, put a new scheme together, and those guys have had an impact on the things we do schematically. And then I think overall, I think the overarching theme is the fact that, that we've got a program and a group of football players now that understand how you win a game and how important the mentality of stopping the run is and what that does to an opponent, what it does for you. Um, this is a physical game. It's a violent game. When you start to be able to pound somebody on the ground, you start to demoralize them. It is demoralizing in a lot of ways. The shell changes, the box changes, it gets a lot more air outside for explosive plays. Um, and, and, and it's not for everybody to be in there grinding it up on the ground. So for these guys to be able to have that mentality, that toughness um, really in the trenches, that violence in the trenches to stop a, a real running attack like we've seen it a couple of these times, the guys who legitimately want to run the ball um, says a lot about all of those things. And I think that uh, I think that all those things are going to continue to build as we keep going. There's a lot of confidence going on right now in that, in that defensive room, and, and it starts with stopping the run and getting the ball. Speaking of stopping the run, Austin Ajuke, Defensive Player of the Week, um, we talked a little bit last night just about the culture on, mm -hmm. on defense. Um, how has Austin just stepped up this year? And just proud of, of your guys, how they're growing under Hayward. Yeah, I mean, Austin's obviously, you know, it's, first of all, for, for the program, we have the third guy, and I think four weeks is, is fantastic. Um, and for, for what Austin's done uh, as, a, as, a, as a person and a player in this program, my hat's off to him because he's, 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 he's been here uh, and he's really accepted the, the role and the culture and, and the demands that we set forth. And you can see it now impact his game. It started, it started last year. People weren't watching that much. Some few, few were. Um, but you saw Austin start to grow at the position. Um, he really started to buy into the weight room. His body is one of the biggest body change guys a year ago that we put up as an example for our guys in the, in the, in the weight room. Um, and so off the field, he's done all that. And then he's got a great influence on the football team. You know, he's, a, he's an upstanding guy who's got a lot of character. Uh, he's got a low ego. He's got a ton of output. Um, and so I think there's a, there's a demand and, and respect that everybody has for him. And then that's coming out in the field. It's coming out, and his, his preparation is, is leading, to, to leading to a lot of success on the football field, and you're seeing that. And, and when that happens, you get a lot of confidence. And it's not false confidence. I think that's an important piece. Is it's not just oh I, I oh yeah I've done all this I've done all that and everything's you know it's all an accident. These guys are purposeful right now. Um, what they're doing is not accident. With this being a, a short week, do you have any update to give on uh, Jeff Weimer or Kyle Williams? Uh, yeah, Jeff. Jeff unfortunately won't be with this week. Uh, Kyle's day to day. What with receiver? You know that's been a, a strong position group for you guys this year, and those three guys along with Ricky White have been uh, handling most of the production. What does that? mean for the rest of that group, the guys who may have to step up this week uh, on Friday? Yeah, there's really no choice. You know, there's no choice. You got, you got a couple guys who are banged up. It's next man up. Um, the depth chart and, and how we put it together and, and what we've done and bulked up those positions. Um, you've seen it come to play in a couple different spots um, already at, at different positions because of injuries or whatever it may be. Um, guys, next, next guy up, and they've got to be prepared. So I'm excited about seeing the opportunities that guys like Nick Williams and, and Seneca um, are going to have to get in there and, and, and get after it. 
what you were talking about Friday night and bringing out the, the crowds. Have you noticed like a, a tangible change or maybe energy shift just on campus and the interest obviously with the winds backing up now? Yeah, I mean, you know, we practice in the morning and then we get we get locked in here till about 10 p.m. every day. I mean, to be here, I'd go get lunch and see it around. Uh, <laughs> wish I was walking around campus probably a little bit more. It's probably a good note. Um, but I say that facetiously in, in regards to the energy we feel outside and what we're getting. Our guys are getting a lot of, you're getting a lot of influence, obviously, through social media and then all of that stuff. We're getting a lot of congratulatory texts. I'm getting a lot of things from people in town that we've met. Um, the support is real. I can, I, I, the guys who've been there uh, since the jump are excited about it, you know. Uh, there's a lot of people getting on as well. That, that's, that happens. That's okay. That's part of it. Um, but I think more than anything is just our guys are going to feed off the right energy. And I think that, that once a, a community or city or a school or program starts to realize that you can impact a game, it makes it fun. When you can impact the stadium on a Friday or Saturday night and your guys feed off that, it, and I, had, I, I, I don't pretend to know what it's like to sit up there. I just, I just can feel it from the field. Um, it's electric, man. It's, it's, such a, it's such an amazing feeling how an energy of a stadium and a group can impact the, the flow of a game because we feed off that. you know. And uh, uh, to me, there's nothing more exciting going on on a Friday night. I mean, whatever you got to do, I mean, whether it's steak or burgers or chicken, you got to go out and get some food, get out there by 8 o'clock. I mean, it's a million places to go, right, Tony? I mean, shoot, go out to where you want to go? Carvers, Pierros, where you want to go? Crack Shack, you know, barcode, where you at? Um, whatever you want to do, get out there on time, let's roll. Does the last few years, like when you go to talk about the close losses, two wins a season ago, does that almost help deliver the message of like, hey, focus, now that you guys are being like almost targeted, you are the better team in some spots, or at least some people expect you to win some of these games. Does it help kind of deliver the message of stay focused on the goal here on a week-to-week -week basis? Yeah, you know that's a great question because it's it's a uh, it's a it's a thing about that 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 you can't. It's hard to coach. You know, you, you got to talk about it. and You have to coach it, but until it's there, you can't. They don't know what that feels like. When until you get in the position where you're stacking wins and people are honestly now giving you their best shot, like they are on you, or you're the favorite. You're the favorite. And, then, and there's no secret when you know when you know you're going in, you're supposed to win. There's a change there, um, and you have to. And I think I, I'm I'm not of the type, as you guys probably know. I'm not of the type to act like that doesn't exist. I'm more of the type knowing here's what it's going to do. And and the, the the reason that I'm able to feel so comfortable doing that, we talked about this before we got here. We talked about that way before we got to this point. Was because I don't want this to be a surprise. I said well, when this kicks in and this culture kicks in, and we start to do the things that have predicates to winning. You are going to be—it's going to turn around, and you need to be ready for it. We've started this dialogue and mindset training and everything we've done, and now it's here. It's not a surprise. They're already—they're already dialoguing it. It's like they already knew it was coming. They started saying, "Okay, now we're the hunt." And you know, I mean, that's not—it's not cliche. That's what happens, and you're going to get everyone's best shot. You're going to get everything. You're going to get all the fakes. You're going to get everything they knew to win. You're going to get—they're going to try to steal possessions. That's what you do. That's what you do when you're trying to go in, and so. Uh, we've got a lot of scar tissue around here, and I think that I don't let guys forget that. There's, there's still a lot of pain going on in regards to what we need to do. It's not all negative. I don't mean it that way. What I mean is like we, we, we got a lot to earn still. we got a lot of respect to earn. Um, it ain't over till the, the, till this season ends. And so uh, we're going to be right there every week. The only focus is this week. It's got to be 1-0 this week, and got to be 1-0 today in our, in our practice. And understand we got a, we got an experienced coaching staff coming in here that has played good defense for a long time. They run triple option football, which is, we have not seen that. Um, they'll be ready. They're going to give us every shot we got, every, every shot we need on Friday night. I know that. Can you uh, expand more on upon like those improvements or changes you saw in your team on Saturday? As you mentioned, you know, that might have been a game a year or two ago. You guys might have lost those changes and improvements that you saw that helped you guys pull out that win. Well, I mean, there's a, there's a few things. Number one, and I think that I mentioned them, but they but they uh, they're. Uh, probably a broader, a broader brush, but I think if you really got down to the macro, we ended up stopping the run. We ended up stopping some third downs. We got some takeaways. We didn't turn it over. Um, we got some big plays late. Uh, we didn't do those late last year in those games. It was the other side. We turned the ball over. We didn't get a stop. We gave up a big play. Um, it was the inverse of that. We were undisciplined. We got some penalties late in the game. There's a offsides on fourth down and one uh, versus UTSA on the right hash going right to left on your radio dial. And we jump and they get another drive and we roll. I mean, those things all come back to me like right there. And we didn't have those. It was the other side. They got a penalty. They got a fourth down. We got a fourth down jump on them. We went down and kicked a field goal. Um, those things were flipped. And I think it's because of maturity. I think it's because they were focused. Um, I think they're because they're, they're, they're more dialed in. I think we're because they're coaching it better. Um, we've had a full season. We, we've really been 
uh, you know, just really, really prepared for some of those situations to, to be able to sit in there and try to grind it out. But I just can't, I can't, we can't present those. They have to like, you got to talk them, talk them forward a little bit, so. Coach, you're talking about a maturity. I feel like for young quarterbacks, that's obviously always tough. And turning the ball over is usually a calling card, and Doug really hasn't done that. What do you make of sort of his efficiency and just kind of his growth? I know we talk about it week to week, but just on that front. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, the maturity at the quarterback position is, is bigger than uh, just knowing the reads or the footwork or what kind of throws or being able to make the throws. That's, uh, that's the beginning stages of it. I think that, that the maturity of understanding situational football, uh, the maturity of understanding when to take a check down. He had a couple check downs and took off with his feet, doing a better job of not forcing the ball downfield on certain down and distances. Um, doing a better job of understanding, you know, in the red zone how, how critical and how, how small the targets are and then timing has changed. Um, I think it's just experience. That position experience is just so uh, invaluable. I mean, there's just the, the things you're coaching every day. We're coaching stuff every day with them, you know, in regards to, oh, this, here's, the, here's an example. We've got to keep in log for this on situational football. Here's the log for going forward a, a third and long inside their territory. It could be a fourth and short if we check it down. Things where there's some growth and some real um, grad course type stuff, he's doing a better job of. What have some strength? What have some strengths been that you've been able to rely on that you'll that'll help you succeed again coming into this week's home game? Um, well, I think number one is the, the turnover battle. Um, I think you're seeing that really, uh, really be a positive for us. I think uh, stopping the stopping the run. This is going to be a big deal this weekend. This, is, this team wants to run the football. Um, explosive plays and playing catch um, on offense. Um, being efficient in the red zone and scoring. Um, being able to field position last year, I think there's a uh, our strength pro, our strength profile. I think I mentioned this last year, but I look at it every week in regards to what's changed and where we're finding edges. I mean, it's over 40 percent. It's plus 46 from last year. It's almost 50 percent difference in our field position strength value um, of just changing the field, and that's big because the percentage of them scoring when they're further away is so so much different. They've got to go so much further than they did maybe a year ago in certain instances. So there's a lot of things that add up. Those may be all a little analytical. But those things are the keys to victory, not, not to mention the stuff that just standards, the way we're, the way we're having our effort, our discipline, um, our toughness. We're playing tough. Like we're, ta we're, you know, we're, we're flying around. We're playing high speeds. We use our catapult and our GPS on a ton of stuff to look at it. We're practicing. We're practicing at a whole different level than we were a year ago, and we're practicing better each week on our, on our GPS and our science. And then it's being reciprocated when we look back at the game. We played our fastest, most physical game Saturday. And so when we see that in the week and it comes out on Saturday, it's like, sweet, it's working. <laughs> so you're a defensive backfield. Um, Baldwin, Jure, and Oliver all got real high grades from PFF. So can you talk about what's improved with the defensive backfield and also to, you know, take into consideration Tyson Player mm -hmm. and Ricky Johnson being out? Yeah, that's a great point. So I think, I think what you're seeing is you're seeing guys now that had to step up into a role um, with some guys down. Um, and, and learn on the fly a little bit, take some, get some rest back there. Maybe they didn't have in training camp or they didn't have in spring ball, and they're getting better every week. They're doing a better job every week. Um, I mentioned it before, you get challenged in this conference now. There's, there's elite receivers in this conference, um, and you're going to get challenged down the field. There's also elite quarterbacks in this conference. The ball's going to get thrown down the field. And so um, the, back end of this, the back end of our guys and our defense, they've been challenged every week, and I think they've gotten better every week. It's been imperfect. There's some, there's some plays we definitely want back and plays we've got to have some discipline and accountability for. Um, that we got to get fixed. That's going to be everywhere. Um, but the way that these guys are, are going back to work and competing um, against, against this type of talent is, is big time. And, then, and their challenge now is going to be no different. You're going to play action off this run, run action, and uh, you're going to have to hang in there. You, uh, you rushed for, I think it was 77 yards last year against New Mexico, which is solid. What does Rocky Long do with his defense that makes it tough to run on? <laughs> I mean that's that's been their that's been their staple for for years now. I mean I've I've played, I've played this defense since I was a player. I was this was, Gary Patterson and and Rocky and that group when they I mean it was I remember it was Brian Erlacher um, was exactly lined up over me for 60 minutes and was awful, um, in this defense. And uh, I don't think he actually came out the field. I think I actually went to fourth down and punt. He just backed up and returned the punt too. So it was like he was on for all 150 plays. Um, this defense is predicated on that. They've got, they've got, they play a three-spoke deal. It's, it's, it's. They've designed it. These guys, have, they know it inside and out. I mean, this is the one of the godfathers of the defense. Um, they do a fantastic job stopping the run. It's hard. There's a lot of things that, that box you in. There's a lot of numbers in the box. Their angles, their gaps, 
Um, they're smart. They know how to mix up the front, chop up the front, move it around. It's tough to run on this, on this defense. It's been proven for, for decades. Um, and so to be, able to, 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 to be able to put our run game together is going to be a big deal. That, that's what we want to do. Um, we believe in our backs and our O-line. Our lines, if we're doing stuff as good as we're doing on offense, it's because of our O-line. Let's not get that twisted. We can't throw a run without the front, and they don't get enough credit. Um, and so they've got a great challenge. They've got a great challenge with this defense. Can you talk um, a little bit more about what Nick Williams um, uh, brings as a receiver? You know, we've seen a little bit of you know, flashes of him. Um, as well, I do expect him to see more. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, you saw a little bit of Nick here uh, already this season um, and a couple different assists. Um, size, a, a guy who's got probably dominant traits his size. You know, he's a big guy who can block, who can block and run and catch. Um, big body. Um, does a real nice job, smart, tough, uh, can get down the field, good hands, um, smart kid who's going to be able to see certain areas of the field and works under the zone underneath stuff as a slot guy, but can also stretch it. Um, so I'm excited to see him play. You know, he's gotten better and better and faster and faster as the offense has been more and more put on top of him, which is good. And same thing will go for Seneca. The more reps they get, the better they'll get. And so uh, I'm excited again to keep, keep that rotation going. And for actually both of you guys, I'm just curious with, with the wins now coming, do you guys sense sort of like an energy shift or kind of just change on campus when it comes to cool walking around? Uh, yeah, definitely. Definitely feel like the, um, you know, the energy is kind of shifted around the building, but, you know, we, we expect to win. And, um, you know, the work's been put in, and so we're just receiving the output of what we put in. Yeah, we're kind of we're in a position that we kind of anticipated going into the season, um, as far as in this building. But you know, the the buzz around the city and around the campus is definitely there. It's something that we can feel, and it's something that we definitely feed off as well. Austin, I asked I asked Marcus about you know the last few years for you guys obviously been a little tough from a win loss perspective. How much does that kind of help you in terms of maintaining focus going forward with success? Yeah, so um, you know I'm one of the guys who's been here. Uh, probably the longest besides I think Woody Ayers, five years. So I, I've seen like some of the lowest lows and then, you know, this season uh, being able to win some games. So it just goes to show that when you put the work in and when you keep your head down and you just work, the results will follow. And to, it's, just, it's just a reminder to never lose focus of, of uh, the goal at hand and the mission, whether it looks bad, whether it feels unaccomplish, uh, unaccomplishable, whether it feels like, um, you know, no one believes in us, you just keep your head down and you work and good things will happen. Austin, how have practice has been leading into these games every week? Our, we've, we've been having great practices, which in turn uh, kind of shows what's been going on in the game. You know, when you have kind of sloppy practices, it comes out on Saturdays and vice versa. If you have great practices, that'll come out on Saturdays too. So, so practice for us is really just a time for us to earn our confidence. We talk about we, we got to earn it because it's not going to just be given to us. So we use practice as a time to, to get comfortable on defense, comfortable with our fits, comfortable with uh, running to the ball, takeaway, stuff like that. So when it comes in the game, when it happens, it's not a surprise. Kaden, I got one here for you. Offensively, it feels like Coach always talks about don't blink, and it feels like you guys have kind of capitalized off of the moments, like in pressure situations. Being in those spots, do you kind of feed off more and more? The more that you guys get done, the more that you guys kind of feel this is where we're supposed to be at. Yeah, for sure. And it, it kind of goes back to what AJ was saying. It's, it's, a, it's a daily thing. You know, um, Coach puts us in those situations on daily in practice, you know, Monday through Friday. And, you know, it just, it just makes the game that much easier. So, you know, we're really a product of what we are Monday through Friday. So question for both of you. Um, your team has scored over 50 points in the last two home games. How do you keep your confidence level at the same when you are heading into this week's game against the Lobos? And what's your initial impression on them? Well, uh, in my opinion, you know, we we look at every team we play the same, you know. It doesn't matter who we're playing. You know, our job is to go out there and execute. Um, New Mexico is a good team. You know, I'm not super familiar with them, you know, with me being new to the Mountain West and everything. but. Um, you know, they're a good opponent and uh, apparently a rival of ours in the Mountain West, so, you know, we're very excited to get out of them. Yeah, they kind of got a unique style of offense, too, with the triple option, and, uh, you know, we, we know they're going to want to run the ball heavy, um, but which we've been pretty good at so far this season. But, I mean, we talk about it all the time. It's about us at the end of the day, so just making sure we're prepared throughout the week and making sure that we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. I practice so that kind of like I was speaking about earlier when the game comes, we already know uh, what to anticipate. Yeah, Aiden, you mentioned 
mentioned that you know you're new here. You got your first yeah. taste of playing against a Mountain West opponent, and they're the defending champs. You guys come away with a big win. What was that atmosphere like playing against the Mountain West rival for the first time? Uh, it was a really crazy atmosphere. You know, it kind of brought me back to the ACC a little bit. It was a uh, <laughs> You know, a really crazy environment. The student section, you know, right behind our bench and everything. A lot of, you know, words being exchanged and, you know, that nature. So, but, um, you know, we, we were very mature out there. We showed that we were a more mature team and, you know, it showed on the scoreboard as well. So, Austin, same thing for you with the students right there. How hard was it to control emotion, not go at them? And then also on the field, it was really chippy. There was a lot of penalties on Utah State. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's hard at all. Like, I'm okay with being the bad guy, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> going on the road and it's us versus however many thousand of them, and you kind of get a different feeling than a, than a home game. So, you know, we go into that environment, a hostile environment, and, and you, you got to play your best. There's no doubt about it. Like you said, we're going against the, uh, the reigning conference champs, and they're going to talk a lot. They're going to do what they do. But the moment we start, we start playing into their game, now we're – now we're behind the chance because it's a penalty on us. So you kind of – teams like that, and we dealt with that in the past here too, where you just kind of have to let them beat themselves, and then you got to stay the course and keep doing what we do. What did you see on your interception, and then what did you see on the return? Uh, I was supposed to blitz. <laughs> I was supposed to blitz <laughs> on that play. But I just – someone told me to drop. So I just dropped in the window. Uh, I checked – over my left shoulder, I saw the slant coming, so I got in the window right, right between the, the receiver and the quarterback, and then uh, I don't think he saw me, so took advantage of the opportunity, and then I, uh, once I caught it, I was trying to go score. Um, I saw the quarterback and the O-lineman coming. I didn't see the receiver uh, coming outside of me, so he kind of caught me by surprise. But, but yeah, just, just trying to get in those slant windows and then uh, take advantage of my opportunities. You guys have been incredible on fourth down defense. Why is that? What is it about fourth down that, get, that just gets you guys so turned up? Yeah, I mean, I said it after the game too, but it, it comes down to pride. And even last year, we were we had a pretty good uh, goal line and, and fourth down defense, and it kind of carried over this year. I mean, it starts with the big guys up front. The D-line's been doing amazing this whole season, uh, whether it's fourth down or not, but especially when it's fourth down of us just, just playing with pride and, and you know, valuing the yard, not letting them get that extra yard, and just making sure that we're running our feet on those fourth and ones so they're not falling forward for the first downs. For uh, um, both of you, Coach, uh, kind of talked about you know, raised standards and kind of embracing having that target on your back after your good start. How are you guys kind of seeing the, the rest of the guys um, answer to those standards and play up to those expectations? Uh, well, nothing's really changed, you know, from the day I stepped foot here to, to now. You know, a lot of the guys in the locker room have a ton of scar tissue from, from the past. And, you know, me too, I, I as well have a chip on my shoulder. And so we just continue to carry that every week. And although, you know, we're becoming the hunted, we're still the hunters. So yeah. that's how we're approaching every week. Yeah, 100%. I, I know it's kind of cliche because we talk about it a lot. But, like, the way we, we go about it here, this program, like, we treat every day literally the same. So last year when we were – 0-8 after the Reno game, we still walked into the building the same way that we walk in uh, right now. So, you know, the approach never changes. It's just sometimes the outcome does. Is it short, for both of you guys, does a short week do anything in terms of, like, recuperation, taking care of your bodies? Like, what are some big changes for a short week playing on a Friday instead of a Saturday? Uh, the only difference this week, I mean, we lose 24 hours, but, you know, that means you just got to put that many more hours, you know, at the Fertitta Complex, um, getting your body back, stretching, you know, get some of that lactic ass out of your body. And, um, just taking care of yourself and being a pro. And, you know, that's what we preach in this program. And, you know, we got a good leader, Coach File, you know, getting us right um, with that every single day. So we definitely do a good job of being pros. Ian, yeah, when it comes to the environment on a Friday night, obviously it's a little bit different dynamic of Friday night in Vegas game as opposed yeah. to Saturday at noon. That dynamic, are you just excited for it to kind of make this, you know, the, the real home? Advantage. Yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm excited for the Rebel fans to get out there, uh, fill up Allegiant Stadium, and, you know, watch us do what we do. AJ, how does it feel to be recognized by the conference, a defensive player for the first time in three years? I mean, it's, it's definitely a good feeling. Um, but I, I feel like the real reward was, you know, celebrating the locker room after with my teammates. Like, like that's what I'm going to remember. It's not – 
it's not the accomplishments or the recognition. All that is, I mean, it's great and it's a byproduct of the work. But when you look back 20 years from now, you're gonna remember that feeling in the locker room celebrating with your teammates. So, Aiden, for on a lot of these runs, the last two games, you're getting you know five, six yards downfield before someone's hitting you or about to hit you. So, what's your attitude when you're in the open field and now it's linebackers and defensive backs? Just run. <laughs> Same thing I've been doing for years, man. Just. Just run, you know, I see daylight, I'm going to hit it.